video three on this 2019. Where's it? T now I'm blind. Come on. Somewhere it says 2000, 2019. Subaru Accent. YF refrigerant, 825 grams. So it's been running for a few minutes now. And coming out of our dash, it is, if it will focus, 34.9 degrees. That's coming from that sensor that you see right there with the blinking light. So it's coming out 34.9 degrees. And our outside ambient air, the fan just came on. So the fan is now blowing air. It's come on high speed. It was on a lower speed. So this is the air intake. I'm not talking it, taking it from the proper place. If I wanted to take it from the proper place, I would take this apart and I'd slip my temperature sensor down in the intake or I'd take the dash apart and slip my temperature sensor on top of the filter. That's the proper taste because that's not the true pro, uh, temperature that is going over the evaporator. It's a mix of the cooler 70 degree air plus this hundred and some degree air that you see there. It was uh, 98 degrees right there. And now that the fan is blowing, it's 103 degrees and it's going up. And you also see the low side pressure took up too. We were down to 34 PSI, no 34 Fahrenheit coming out of the dash. But now that we have hotter air being sucked in over there, look at this. We got 43 degrees coming out of the dash because our air temperature is taking a rise. Over 100 degrees is going down inside there and it's making the dash temperature go up. If we go back to, uh, there's the temperature right there. If we go to our refrigerant side, you see our high side pressure it was 150 some degrees uh, PSI. It has dropped to 107 PSI. Our low side was at 24 PSI. It's now 30 PSI. Our superheat is hovering somewhere around five degrees superheat. Our subcooling is hovering around 36 degrees subcooling. Our discharge temperature, which I don't have on there right now, it should be it's calculating that our discharge temperature is 110 degrees. Let's take a look at our discharge temperature. Let's grab that, what is 251. 251, we have 86 degrees going in as a liquid to our internal heat exchanger. So let's take that temperature sensor that is at 86 degrees. Let's put it over here at our discharge line this is the discharge line off the compressor and we will see that go up you can see it going up right now it's now taking the temperature of this hot discharge line and that 110 degrees would have been more of our liquid line outlet discharge pressure 142 our liquid line is 107 and that's our liquid line right over there going to the expansion valve after it went through the internal heat exchanger. I know this gets a little complicated because we have external ex heat exchanger, we have liquid line going in, then gets subcooled again and it comes out. Then we have a rear one and we have a rear evaporator coming back too. So this is 142 degrees right here where I put my fingers, right where this sensor is. It's 142, 144 degrees discharge temperature. That's under these working conditions here at idle. See our superheat's climbing up to 10. Subcooling came down to 32. Look at that on a graph. As the computer takes over, this is a variable displacement compressor. There's the valve right there it is taking over and changing pressures and temperatures. There's nothing you can do with whacking off a little can and adding more, or taking out refrigerant to change those pressures and temperature. Because once the comp uh, computer takes over, it starts changing the internals that will just throw you way to hell off. And everything you've learned in the last 40 years that had to do with fixed piston compressors just gets dumped into the garbage can. And so we just had the fan kicking high speed and you could see the high side pressure coming back down 
just came down from a high of, oh, we're at 140, 150 some PSI, 119. And we can see our low side is going back down. We're down to 27. Up here we're above 30, up here we're at 33 at minute six. And now we're at 27 at minute nine. Let's go look back at our temperature. Oh, we're back down to 38 degrees. Let's look at our graph. When our pressure was all the way up to 150 some PSI, we were at 43 degrees. Well now, the computer told the swash plate, now if I had my dwell meter on here, I could read the dwell, and it's, it's turning up the displacement so it could work more, and check this out. We're down to 38 degrees now. Now you can read all this on your scanner, but not everybody has a scanner that can read all the pressure and temperature sensors on a car. Most aftermarket scanners do a really poor job of it. They only let you see a little bit or a couple. Very few aftermarket scanners will actually allow you to drive the compressor control solenoid unless you had an OEM or very, very few aftermarket ones. So we're limited. And what are you limited to? Using your hands with touch, temperature sensors, pressure sensors, and just understanding. You have to understand that you have a computer, a brain, taking over and doing some stuff that you'll call voodoo magic. Funny stuff is going on. If you were used to fixed piston compressors, I'm telling you, you will get fooled. And I see guys overcharging, undercharging vehicles all the time, burning up compressors, roasting clutches. This one doesn't have a clutch because they're using their old school knowledge from guys from 40, 50 years ago, 30 years ago. That starts going into the garbage can now. It's a new set of rules. And if you don't understand it, this is why I'm seeing in automotive shops so many burnt up compressors. It's from the old school guys. The guys with a lot of experience, they're the ones causing the damage on top of the guys with no experience. So we have a combination of both. You got guys who are 50, 60 years old causing damage because they're stubborn and stuck on their ways like a piece of wood. They don't change, they're like talking to a log. And then there's the guys who are 30, 40, 50 years who wanna do better and they're always inquisitive and they wanna know more and they're willing to change and learn the new ways. So you have two camps of school, the stubborn old logs and the old guys who are actually keeping up on things. Hopefully this opened your eyes that things are not normal when it comes to variable displacement compressors because you just seen us range from above 40 to down to in the 30s and pressure it's all being controlled by a computer while just here at idle all right guys i'll see you later we're 148 degrees at our discharge right here we are where are we at we are nope i'm in the wrong one 36 degrees that temperature sensor right there where my finger is it's 36 degrees coming out of the dash on that suction line right there but if i grab that take it off of there now this is after the heat exchanger so now i'm right there i'm reading right there it has picked up some heat from the hot liquid going in right there Sixty-three degrees. So it was thirty-four degrees coming out of the evaporator past the expansion valve, and then after it went through the heat exchanger and it comes out right there, fifty-eight degrees. It's changing, but you could see the heat gain. It gained that heat by stealing it from the liquid that was going in this direction to feed the expansion valve. See ya. Oh, and if you wanted to see that, line temperatures, that's the line temperatures right here, line temperatures, high side and left. You see this little peak right here? That's when I pulled it off and put it over there. You could see a change. Uh, Superheat and subcooling, you could watch that change. Saturation, you could watch that change. This is instructors in school. This is why I tell all the instructors who are in high school auto shop and college level auto shops, stop using analog gauges, please. Get time domain 
and go over time so you have you you know you have your graft and you could play it back stop using gauges gauges were good for the dinosaurs okay they're fossils now they're oil crude oil for us nowadays those old days of fixed piston compressors out the door guys catch up remember lee iacocca lead follow or get out of the way if you are an instructor in a college or in a high school automotive shop catch up with the times please